Well, I hope everybody had a good first day of school. Uh, first days of school are a little unusual. You know, you have that anticipation of what a new year holds and running into people you haven't seen in a while and that energy in the hallway combined with an endless parade of teachers saying, here's a book, here are the class rules, here's a syllabus. Kind of an unusual day, but the second day, a little more normal. And today, in this class, I think that holds true. And today's lesson is on AP themes. These are big overarching ideas that apply to all of the history we're going to learn about. Now there are six themes to AP world history. Humans and the environment, cultural developments and interactions, governance, economic systems, social interactions and organization, technology and innovation. And by reading that list you have learned nothing, but hopefully if I go into a little more detail and explanation you do get the gist of what these six big themes are. So theme number one, humans and the environment. The environment shapes human societies. As populations grow and they change, these populations in turn shape their environments. So we live here in Michigan. We have four seasons. We act differently than people who live in the desert or people who live on an island. So think of some examples of how human beings have adapted to their environment. Some people can think of cultures that live with nature. Some try to really alter nature and they create things to overcome the environment that they're living in. So people live throughout this world in very different places and the environment and the geography affects the way they live throughout time. So that's big theme number one humans and the environment. Now big theme number two, cultural developments and interactions. So as human beings develop ideas and beliefs and religions, it creates a self image, it creates group image of how they see themselves within their society, where they fit in. And there's this fancy schmancy word hegemony and the people who get the power what do they do with that power based on these political and social um, connections that they share? So in class I gave you some personal examples of the culture I come from and you gave some examples as well. So the cultures we are part of, so for example if you say I'm a conservative, I am a liberal, I am a Presbyterian, I am an Italian American, I am a whatever, okay? Those weren't my personal things, those are just algebraic variables. So cultures develop and some people rise up, some are subjugated, sometimes it changes, identities change, and we're going to see this in the human story, cultural developments and interactions. A big theme number three is governance, a little more tangible than the first two. And as governments form, there's a lot of factors that contribute to their formation and how people do business and throughout history people have had theocracies and oligarchies and empires and, and communism and um, there's all sorts of forms of government. The Spartans had a military dictatorship. Now here I'm going to use it on a scale of America. I want you to think about some tangible examples. So here is the local level at Clarenceville. How did we get that beautiful AstroTurf football field? What was involved to get that happening and through the city of Livonia? Now this is the leader of Wayne County, the county that we're in. What are some things that the county does? This is a governor. What are things going on in the state of Michigan? This is a president at the federal level. So how did these people come into power? What kind of issues do they tackle? What kind of policies do they do? And as they change, for us personally and throughout history, whoever's running the show will dictate how people live. Okay, so that's governance is the third big theme. Now big theme number four are economic systems. Okay, so as societies develop they affect and are affected by ways they produce, exchange, and consume goods. Okay, Throughout history, some people have been agricultural, some have been industrial, some have been really poor, some have had control of a resource that the world really needs. For instance, here, this is an oil producing nation, they become affluent. So, some tangible examples, I want you to think about 
how food gets on your table. So I take my personal example, I'm a service industry person, I'm a teacher. My job is funded by the government and tax dollars. Now my wife is a nurse. She provides a service as well, very different than mine. Hers is paid with a combination of private money and public money. Now what are we getting paid in relation to what other jobs get paid? So what we get paid is what society considers you know, our value within the society. Okay, once we get money, we choose what to use with our money. What do we buy? Okay, and, this, and these economic systems apply to history. So that's the fourth big theme. Now the fifth big theme, social interactions and organization. It's the process by which society group their members and norms that govern interaction between these groups. And then these groups, you know, affect a lot of different things. So I want you to think about the affiliations that you have and that you will have. So for example, your occupation is oftentimes going to be, so if I go to a new group of people and I ask, what do you do for a living? Whatever they say is probably going to create a certain hierarchy. So if somebody says, I'm a neurosurgeon. Oh, wow. Um, what are you? I am unemployed. Okay. Well, I think differently of those two people just by meeting them. Some jobs are held in higher regard than other jobs. Okay. Now, the culture you're a part of. Some people might say, you know, I'm part of Albanian culture. I'm part of um, Nigerian culture. I'm part of such and such culture. And oftentimes that will dictate how you interact with people. For example, you might say, I can only marry within this group. That's going to change the way you date, okay? So to give you a little example here, your political affiliations. I am a Republican. I am a Democrat. I am a Libertarian. I am this. I am that religious affiliation. I am a Roman Catholic. I am Jewish. I am a Muslim, okay? Socioeconomic class. I'm rich. I'm poor. I'm middle class. These are all these uh, connections that we have that dictate the human story. It dictates your personal story, and we can scale it all the way to a world level. And the sixth and final theme, which is easier than the other five for your generation because you've lived it, technology and innovation. As human beings go through time, we try to increase our comfort and our security and try to live better and using technology to do that. And it's accelerating at a rate that is absolutely unbelievable it's absolutely unbelievable how fast technology is moving in the ancient world it moved fairly slow especially by comparison of today okay so these are the six big themes now i'm giving you an assignment to hopefully have you um, understand this a little bit better so number one when you're living in metro detroit like you and i are how do we interact with our environment now compare the way we live with people on a desert or on an island low population areas, high population areas. So high population areas, not a lot of room. They build big structures to the sky. Low population areas, you have huge amounts of land. You can oftentimes do whatever you want there because nobody's really there. Um, on an island, very expensive to bring it in. There are people in the desert. What do they do for water? Uh, they don't need to have a snowblower, but how do they live? Number two, provide a first person account of your people. And that's in quotations because how you consider what your people how have it developed the culture you are part of? And how does it affect your interactions with the world? Number three, think of the governmental bodies at the local, county, state, and national levels. What policies do you like? What policies do you not like? What have they done well? What have they done poorly? Number four, how is your family getting what they have? What industries and systems are in place to allow them to get money? What broader constructs are they resting in? Okay, think about these broader constructs that we talked about in class. Number five, think of all the sociological affiliations you have and list them and what kind of norms exist within each of them. And then six, catalog everything you've used in the last 24 hours that made your life easier that wasn't around 200 years ago. And that's a little more concrete than the other ones, but hopefully you understand these six themes. And question seven is very straightforward. The six themes of world history, humans and their environment, how human beings change based on the geography and environment there and cultural development of, and interactions how do cultures develop what causes cultures to develop so for example if i say hellenistic culture a couple thousand years ago how did hellenistic culture develop okay with alexander the great and the defeat of the persians this kind of thing governance who's running the show at what level what are they doing economic system 
economics is the um, means of goods and services being exchanged and the value behind them and the choices we make in terms of those things. Social interactions and organizations. We as human beings are social creatures. We're not islands unto ourselves. What are the factors, historically speaking, that cause us to interact and organize in a certain way? And then sixth and finally, technology and innovation. How does technology change the game? And I think throughout history, certain game-changing inventions, I'll go back about 500 years ago or so, the printing press, complete game changer. I go way, way back. The rise of the wheel, okay, that's a total game changer. I'm going to go fast forward in history in 2007, um, Steve Jobs and the iPod, game changer. Okay, so hopefully you understand these, and if you answer these seven questions, we'll call it all well and good, and I appreciate you watching.